Universal Precautions from Nanatuck Resource Associates. Welcome and thank you for taking this training. It is one of many trainings to help people stay safe and prepare for the unexpected. Today, we will be talking about what universal precautions are, bloodborne pathogens, protocols for safety, exposure, and a quiz to wrap things up at the end. Universal precautions, what are they? Universal precautions are recommended practices used to minimize the risk of exposure to infectious diseases and pathogens carried in blood and bodily fluids. Bloodborne pathogens. Bloodborne pathogens are infectious microorganisms in blood that can cause disease in people. Examples of bloodborne pathogens include hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. Hepatitis B. Hepatitis B can be transmitted by blood, sexually transmitted, transmitted through IV drug users, through household contact, such as sharing razors, toothbrushes, sharing drinking cups and utensils. It can be treated with medications and vaccines are available for hepatitis B. Hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is primarily bloodborne can be sexually transmitted, prenatal, can be transmitted by blood-to-blood -blood contact, such as non-sterile tattoos, syringes, or cuts. There is no vaccine currently available, but it may be treated with medication if chronic and causing liver damage. HIV and AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. For prevention, follow universal precautions such as hand washing, proper handling and disposal of sharps and contaminated materials, cleaning and disinfecting after any contact with blood, and personal protection barriers such as gloves, masks, and goggles. Common ways of being exposed to pathogens. Some common ways of being exposed to pathogens include nosebleeds, lost teeth, cuts, vomit, bathroom accidents and soiled clothing, contaminated surfaces, and tissues and bandages. Modes of pathogen transmission. Modes of pathogen transmission include contact from skin to skin or from contaminated surfaces, airborne infectious particles, and droplets from sneezing, coughing, or talking. Body fluids. When dealing with any body fluids, err on the side of caution and take necessary measures to assume every person has an infectious disease. Protocols for safety. Essential techniques used to control infections are effective hand hygiene, using gloves and other barriers, disposing of waste appropriately, and cleaning spills promptly, carefully, and thoroughly. Hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is the single most important activity to decrease the spread of infections of all kinds. Wash your hands after using the restroom, before eating, before touching your mouth, face, or eyes. Be sure to use warm water, soap, and a cloth to dry off. Waterless hand sanitizer may be used if there is no visible soiling of hands, though it should not be substituted for soap and water. Always wash with soap and water after several uses of hand sanitizer. Wash hands after wearing gloves. Apply a dime-sized amount of soap or cleaner to the hands. Rub hands vigorously for 10 to 15 seconds. Scrub between fingers, under nails, tops of hands, and wrists. Singing Yankee Doodle or Happy Birthday in their entirety will ensure you've spent enough time washing. Barriers. Always wear gloves or place some type of barrier between you and the person you are caring for. And always wear gloves during cleanup procedures. Skin wounds. Skin wounds such as scratches, abrasions, lacerations, and weeping skin lesions are potentially infectious. Cover all wounds with a secure bandage. If possible, the injured person should perform his or her own wound care. 
Pressure to stop a bleeding wound. Always wear gloves. Gloves should never be reused. And apply a new bandage over the bandage if saturated with blood. Cleanup procedure. Always use disposable towels for cleaning up blood or body fluids. Clean surfaces with an approved disinfectant. Wet surface with disinfectant, leave on wet for 10 minutes and then wipe dry. All materials contaminated with blood and or body fluids should be double bagged in a trash liner and sealed. Gloves should be disposed of in the trash. Trash liners should not be reused and trash should be discarded as soon as possible. Non-disposable cleaning equipment and materials. Mop heads should be disinfected with work approved disinfectant. Any linens should be stored in a plastic bag until laundry. Thoroughly wash hands after cleaning, even if gloves are worn. Used needles, syringes, and other sharp objects. Needles should not be recapped, bent, or removed from the syringe before disposal. In homes where sharps are used, a designated container is kept for all used needles. When the container is three quarters full, notify your manager to request a pickup. Visit www.massmedwaste.com for additional information on proper disposal and pickup. Respiratory etiquette. Always cover mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Use a tissue to cover mouth or blow nose and dispose of in trash. Use sleeve or arm instead of hands. And wash hands or use hand sanitizer after sneezing and coughing or blowing your nose. Exposure. Do not share towels, cups and utensils, razors, or toothbrushes. Even though bloodborne pathogens have not been shown to be transmitted in saliva, you should not share personal items. Bloodborne pathogen infections, even when treated, may sometimes be fatal.